Epic? Oof. I don't do epic. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Monero Live. I'm Kevin Hardy, and we're going to discuss briefly um, the F-150 Lightning off to my right here and the Rivian R1T frames. We've talked about them at a high level as rolling chassis, and now we're going to go a little bit more in detail to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of which one is, you know, better in their own right for kind of what they're trying to do within the marketplace itself. So as you can kind of see, and as we kind of come in here, they are very similar. There's some very um, noticeable differences between each of the frames aside from their color itself. The primary one with the Rivian being its shock towers. They're very car-like. They're you know, multi-material um, stampings or multi-piece stampings themselves. And this is a strategy found throughout essentially the frame of the Rivian. There are a series of overlapping panels itself that comprise the entirety of the frame. It is a, you know, obviously a ground up uh, BEV vehicle. And um, it, 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 it harkens essentially to, um, I would say without you know, being part of the Rivian team, a series of probably pretty stringent functional objectives to why this frame is the way it is. Um, being the, the layered panels itself and more than likely maybe some, some capital constraints as far as how big of panels that they can stamp, what they can build at their plant. Um, that's, that's really the only reason I can think of essentially for the strategy, what we're seeing, you know, practically applied throughout the entire Rivian with the series of stampings that they do have. You can kind of see through here, there's spot welds, there's multi, multi-layered panels all throughout. Very much like a unibody uh, car itself. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to this. You can do different uh, materials, both in thickness and types to get the performance that you're looking for, both in crash and overall um, you know, vehicle performance, but there's obviously a lot of um, manufacturing considerations for that. With this kind of welding and the size of this vehicle, you have, you know, the, the frame moving around a little bit. There's a lot of fixturing and just overall build considerations. As you see across the top of the Rivian, uh, where there's adhesive between it and the body itself, it is fixed. There is no isolation between these two vehicles. There's kind of some uneven contact patches and you can see kind of a difference in welds as they come through where some nice clean robotic welds and two tailor welded blanks right here. And then some splatter and some other considerations here. So obviously this is an early vehicle and it's their first vehicle at the gate itself. But um, it is interesting with respect to the kind of the architectural elements that this vehicle does have in contrast to the Lightning itself. Um, both are very smooth as far as their kind of overall load paths, but you know when you look at the Rivian here, as far as how its section profile changes, it's definitely much more um, curtailed to the environment itself. And one of the things I do really like about this, while there is a series of like overlapping panels, and you can kind of see here how some of them align for one and two-way locators, and then there are some threaded considerations, some of these which couldn't even be used uh, and aren't used on this particular vehicle. So these may be R1 specific, um, but there is no brackets. So when you kind of pull back and we look at the Lightning itself, the Lightning is very, very elegant in the front and very simple through the majority of the frame. But as we get towards the rear of the vehicle, you start to see a little bit of a different story with respect to uh, the, the brackets and some of the, the structure used. So when you come through here, um, this is the, the rear portion of the bed itself. This is an interface for essentially like an integrated uh, hitch and bumper assembly, which is nice. 
It can float in Z height here based on how it is essentially positioned. And you can see essentially with this rear frame module, which essentially runs down to this kick up, you have an inner and outer piece. They are uniform thickness. This particular vehicle has no tailor welds on some of their heavy duty applications in the front. They do do some tailor welded blanks. Uh, you see the crush initiators here, but essentially inner and outer half. Very, very simple in comparison to the Rivian, which has essentially a series of layered welds, uh, layered materials, excuse me, and essentially where they're doing, they have to even stamp in access panels for one side of welding itself. The only thing I'm not thrilled about with the Lightning itself here is these particular brackets themselves. They're very similar to the ICE vehicle itself, but they sit on top of the frame, which makes sense from a structural perspective. And then they have these, um, these caps, which they float to ensure you know, they're, that they're accurately positioned. Again, this is a very long vehicle. I would have loved to have seen essentially something that sleeves over that's one piece, very similar to this, maybe comes up in a U-shape where you can get some complexity out of this and potentially make these parts common through the entire rear of the vehicle itself. But that's when you look at this in comparison to the, 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 the rest of the frame itself, there is complexity in the front, but there's a, a fair amount of it in the rear. And I think some of that is essentially to set them up for success, potentially in the future with hopefully a migration of the expedition to a very similar platform, you know, going forward itself. But again, you know, there is some sleeve joints going over these two, these two parts here, but significantly simpler in overall uh, execution. And in general, much thicker gauges of of stampings used throughout the entirety of the frame. Now, these are built somewhat locally, and that, as mentioned before, this could be a, an enabler for you know, Ford. The big three are all here. We're building trucks for both you know, GM, Stellantis, for, and Ram, Jeep, that's down in Toledo. But in that area, there's, there's a lot of, of capital that exists, but it might be being tied up by the legacy auto um, manufacturers, and that might be the availability of some of that equipment or other design considerations may have restricted you know, Rivian from being able to pursue a, a, a little bit more simpler of a strategy. But as we start coming forward, you really start to see some of the legacy aspects of the ICE uh, consideration, which I'll, I'll point out, but that's the, the overall simplicity of the F-150's frame. Um, and when you look at it, its section height as well is very, very tall. So this is roughly, I think like around 12 and a half inches itself. The Rivian itself is very tall, um, but this is, you know, the, the more box section that you can get in height, the more rigid these frame members will be. And there's not a lot of difference between this frame and the Raptor itself, which, um, you know, is a high performance off-road variant. And there's many a video on YouTube of them being jumped, you know, extremely high, much higher than they were designed to, and coming out relatively okay. So there is a lot of, robust considerations for this frame. It is, it is pretty strong. You don't necessarily need to have the layering of materials, but I would love to have some conversations to see what drove the, the channels or the overall section and, and baffles that are being used throughout the Rivian's like, frame uh, itself, specifically the mid-frame module. Because when you look at the mid-frame module here on the F-150, this is a single piece of tube that runs down here. There's nothing else going on here. And then we'll go over again to the Rivian to take a look. And we'll see a, a pretty drastic difference where this comes out to pick up the sill, you know, as it, it fastens and supports the battery. But you can look through here, and here's some flow drill screws. We saw that on the F-150 body earlier. But just the layering of material, it may be hard to see uh, from your perspective here, but the light does end, which means there's essentially another series of panels that are running and sleeving the entire way down. So there's a substantial amount of material uh, in this vehicle. And some of that has to do with the fact, I think the overall width of the frame of the Rivian and it's that kind of ratio. There's a very drastic profile change through here, which is not present on the, on the Lightning. And that's indicative of it being a BEV from the ground up. Essentially the battery fills the entirety of this cavity for this vehicle and they're really pushing the boundaries. So there's probably a lot of side impact considerations in the frame rail of this vehicle. And to be honest, on the next iteration of a lighting, I would expect to see some like, of these profiles um, that are visible in the Rivian to be present on this vehicle here. Because as we look at this, <clears throat> and we kind of compared some part numbers on the lightning itself, their carryover uh, and strategy 
and execution from the ICE version, and you, there are some legacy uh, design or constraints with that for this vehicle, and they probably um, just simply can't risk it from a financial perspective because that's essentially a complete new vehicle. The cab has to accept all these changes, and then you're revalidating suspension, you're revalidating essentially the entirety of the vehicle if you wanted to try and pursue something like that. But I would ex expect to see the next iteration of the Lightning to splay out considerably farther to get them a little bit more capacity in the future. Now the Lightning itself doesn't have a cradle um, for the suspension like the Rivian does, which is a, a very complicated multi-piece extrusion assembly. Uh, here we just have, again, two stampings itself, and then there are like essentially U-shaped inlays for the lower control arm pickup points, again, to allow them to get some float and uh, align these um, parts as needed, and they probably do like a, an after-piercing operation for this frame when everything's welded up to ensure it's as accurate as possible. But this is essentially a portion of what had been the cradle you know, on the Rivian. You don't see any of this kind of cross-car structure on it where the F-150 does have this. And this is some legacy carryover from essentially the, the ICE vehicle itself and where those control arms come into the vehicle. One thing that is kind of interesting is this here is where the, the front um, FESM, uh, front end structural module, the F-150 sits on top of. There's bushings and it kind of comes through here. And then there are two tubes that hang out, and you can see, which is the front small overlap tusk. There's a rear one here. But on the Rivian, they have a nice cross car uh, structural member there. And uh, I have seen some Rivian produce like third party small overlap uh, glances, if you will. And it performs, it seems like it performs very well glancing off the barrier uh, and continuing moving forward, much akin to a, like a Volvo or, or something like that. Not a lot of energy being transferred into the occupant space, it continues to move. Where this has a, while well, it does have some structure up front, which is indicative of a little bit more of a defensive strategy, there's not a lot, you know, this is all set up to, to take the load of the chassis, you know, on some other vehicles like the Ram. This displays outward, which there's some compromises there, um, but that is for done for, again, for small overlap, where the frame is reaching out here. Um, there's positives and negatives to doing that, but what you see here is something that is well suited for both like frontal impact and carrying load of the vehicle. So there is a very deliberate work focus with this truck, and when you look at even the gauges and materials, it's, I don't want to say it's, you know, it is built for tough in that regard, and it's very, very clear that there are some pretty significant requirements um, that the vehicle probably has to meet. We're not privy to privy to those, um, but you start to see some of the, uh, in just the parts themselves, that stuff carry through the actual design itself. But uh, overall, it's, it's pretty interesting. I would, like I mentioned, I would suspect that we will see essentially the next iteration of the, the Lightning to look in a similar fashion as the, the Rivian with its overall sweeping profiles to make maximize the amount of space that they have because there's no doubt that they probably gave away um, battery packaging with the, the modules in their battery pack and they could probably get more, you know, significantly more than 132, or excuse me, 131 kilowatt hours to the customer because there's roughly about, you know, 10 inches or so until you get to the outward edge of the rocker panel for the actual cab itself. And uh, it'll be interesting to see as this, this platform goes along how it evolves, but this is how they got you know, a truck that uh, out the door for the pro model is sub $40,000, which is pretty impressive. So, yeah, so in general, I, when I look at these things, I know I've been kind of hard on some aspects of the Rivian. It's extremely complex um, in general, and it's actually, I know it's hard to see. There's two very large things here, but I do have a sampling of parts that kind of I think it does a good job of summarizing these two frames, and I think in general these two vehicles, they're right here on the table. I, uh, I forgot to mention that while we were going through across. And I, I spoke to this earlier with a tow hook assembly. So here on the left, you know, we have the tow hook from the Rivian. It is a five-piece assembly. It has 16 fasteners that comprised it. 
of it, six machining operations. So you look at this casting here, it's been machined on each surface and then around the actual tow hook itself, which is very, very nice. This forge piece is, you know, quite elegant looking, but that has been cleaned up itself. There are a series of threaded operations to thread these pieces and then obviously um, itself, I believe there's 10 threading operations in total and it gives this overall tow hook assembly. When you come over here to the F-150 with a lightning, you have a two piece assembly, you know, kind of a mandrel bent uh, piece of uh, steel. This is very likely like a commodity off the shelf item for them. It might be spec by four, but because of the volume they command, it's easy to get essentially a piece of tube made to whatever dimensions you need because of how high a volume they build. A stamping, two bolts, and then a three piece, you know, nut faster consideration here, which would sit in the frame. And then you see the provisions for crash where if it would hit a wall, it slips through the, uh, this cutout here and probably shear off this bolt and then moves rearward, which is very similar to the Rivian itself, where it uses this channel, shearing the bolts, and then moving rearward in the bumper to ensure that uh, the energy is dissipated eff effectively. But I think these two components, they're both on, on both vehicles, do a really good job of kind of explaining the complexity and I think just overall, like what these vehicles are and you know, how they kind of came into the marketplace. You know, high capital investment, high volume, legacy establishment. You know, when you look over here, there is a, you know, very, very stylized component, a multi-piece assembly. I think there's a lot that could be done to simplify it going forward. But um, I think that is a, like a great summation of when you look at the frame itself between the two vehicles of the difference between these two trucks that um, essentially, uh, they have very different approaches. They started out in very, very different places. They're, they're, they have similar market overlaps, but uh, how they will continue to mature and go forward is going to be interesting as, as we showed with the front end, there are some limitations to what Ford has to deal with that Rivian does not. And then conversely with the kind of capital side to that and the complexity side of buildup, there's gonna be challenges if I think going forward if Rivian really wanted to scale up volume specifically to get out a maybe more entry level truck similar to like like a Toyota Tacoma as far as content level and things of that nature. Um, or they may have to kind of sit within the realm of where they're at, which is a lower volume, more niche vehicle. But uh, that is often the case with those types of vehicles being um, those, they're very deliberate decisions. And I don't want to say that necessarily what I see on the Rivian is bad because they're, when you look at the overall time and those considerations of engineering resources, it just, in some ways it is what it is. Um, you can only do so much moving forward. So, so overall, um, you know, thank you for kind of tuning in and looking at the kind of high level overall uh, comparison between the R1T and the F-150 Lightning. It's clear that there's, there's a lot going for the Lightning itself. It's, it's much simpler and I think going forward, it's only going to get simpler, more cost effective as they try to ramp up volume and then as new BEV vehicles come online, potentially on this platform as well. With the Rivian itself, um, in some ways with a performance vehicle, it's on a kind of a different spectrum and the body reflects some aspects of that as well. It's, it's much more complicated, but uh, it has some very unique attributes going forward. So they're both interesting, but uh, it's undeniable that the F-150 is clearly um, significantly simpler overall to produce and manufacture. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you can, uh, subscribing does help us out quite a bit. And uh, we, do, we do sell reports on a lot of these vehicles we have. The Model Y one is a, is a focal point here coming out shortly with the differences between the, the 2020 that we have and some that we've noticed with the 2021 and the brand new 2020 with the, the mega castings and the more modular nature itself. So I'll provide a lot of insight to um, where Tesla is going kind of from here with respect to that. And then these reports for both the Rivian and then down the line, the F-150 will also be available as well. So again, thank you very much, and uh, we really appreciate it.